Hello folks, welcome to the show, my name is Lafaria. Uh, so, Goblins vs Gnomes will hit Hearthstone tomorrow, which means it's about time that I give you my thoughts on the new cards. Uh, I haven't done that already, um, whenever new cards were spoiled, because um, in Blizzard games, uh, Blizzard games always tend to generate a large amount of hype, and I don't really like that. So. Uh, I kind of want to counteract that a little bit, but with the release on our doorstep, I uh, should probably give you my impressions. So, I've done this for um, Magic the Gathering in the past. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, the, here's how it goes. Uh, we will go over every card very briefly, and I will give you my first impression on uh, each card. In particular, we will start with the neutral cards, and then in uh, other videos, we will uh, do three classes at a time and look at the specific class cards that um, the set will bring. So as always I'm going in rather blindly here. I've uh, looked at the cards a little bit uh, as they popped up on my like Facebook newsfeed and whatnot. Um, and I've uh, looked them over yesterday when I downloaded the, um, the images for the video. But other than that I'm pretty in unimpressed. Oh yeah, and I've done a uh, an arena run so far, so I have some uh, play experience with some of the cards. But other than that, I'm um, not that informed about the cards, uh, so you will see kind of my first or maybe second impression on the cards. So, here we go. So, well, let's start with the neutral cards, shall we? First off, we have Annoy Utron. Two mana, one, two, taunt with Divine Shield. Yeah, that guy will be a better culture footman, I might say. Um, and he will be exactly what his name implies, namely annoying. It's not very hard to get uh, rid of, but um, you will probably take like one or two hits and that will kind of slow you down. So not a brilliant card, but hey, um, if you really need some early defense, maybe. So, Antique, Heelbot, 5 mana, 3-3, three, three. Battlecry, restore 8 health to your hero. Okay, I'm always not in favor of health gain cards, as you might know. Um, one way to, to, um, to make heal cards viable is to put them on a good minion buddy. And a 3-3 three, three for 5 does not really cut it, even, even if he restores... 8 health. It might be good enough against uh, like some of the more aggressive decks, but I don't think that that card will be viable. And then, RK Nullifier X21. 4 mana 2, 5, Taunt, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. That card I like. Um, as you know, uh, 2, 5 for 4 is not a terrible stat line. It's a bit, a bit subpar, but it has uh, taunt and a 5 health taunt is always nice and with the protection against enemy spells that uh, card will stick around a bit more and will probably do its uh, job on the defense so I'm uh, happy about this card this, this looks pretty good for uh, slower control decks Blinktron 3000 uh, our first legendary in the set 5 mana 3 4 so the stat line isn't very great and uh, Battlecry equip a random weapon for each player okay um, so I don't know uh, which weapons can be uh, equipped by that minion. Is it all weapons in the game? So one player could get a Gore Howl, one player could get an Assassin's Blade, maybe? Or a Light's Justice? Uh, I don't really get that. What strikes me here, uh, of course the stat line is not great, but uh, what strikes me is the synergy with Harrison Jones. So you can give your, um, your opponent a weapon and... Um, immediately destroy that and draw some cards from it. So that's very nice. Um, if I recall correctly, Harrison Jones is 5 mana as well, so you could do that on turn 10 and refuel your hand with that a little bit. Uh, and you get a weapon on top of it, which is which is very nice. I will probably try that out that combo if it's viable or not. Um, I run uh, Harrison Jones in my uh, warrior control deck, I think. Maybe I will put it in, into some other decks. We will, we will see. Um, but that uh, that looks very nice. I, I like that. I don't know if the card will be good on its own, but we'll see about that. Then, Bomb Lobber. Uh, 5 mana, 3, 3. Battle cry, deal 4 damage to a random enemy minion. Okay. Uh, random damage to random minion. 4 damage to a random minion, rather. Um, again, the stat line not great with 3, 3 for 5. Um, but four mana, uh, um, four, four mana, four damage uh, kills a lot of stuff, right? So 
that might be viable. It's random though. You have to, you have to keep that in mind. But against an aggro deck, if you play, you will most likely kill one of their um, minions, and which is kind of nice, I guess. Um, but I think it's slightly overcosted for five mana. Uh, I can't see that being that good, uh, even in arena. I don't think uh, it is removal, though, which is which is nice in arena, especially on a minion body. Uh, but I think the five mana is a bit too much. I uh, well, if it was like a 4 mana 3-2 maybe, with that effect, it might be viable. But that way I don't think so. We will see. Burly Rockjaw Trog. 4 mana 3-5. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain plus 2 attack. I think I have played that one in my arena run, and that guy has proven to be quite good. Um, of course, 3-5 for 4 is not terrible. Uh, that's like a standard stat line, and he just grows bigger with... Uh, when your opponent casts more spells um, So yeah, that, that seems to be a very cost-efficient minion um, What catches my eye here is that this card counters Miracle Rogue really hard So if you play that into an opponent's turn uh, 6 or 7 where you might go gadgets and coin conceal or something like that and um, You gain like 4 attack from that so that's a 7-5 for 4 which will then hit your opponent in the face, well that um, that could be kind of brutal against Miracle Rogue. So since I started to play, uh, started playing Miracle Rogue recently, um, I'm not too too fond of this card, but uh, I think it's good that it's there. Um, whether it's good against other um, other decks in particular, I can't really say at the moment. There's not that many decks that use a wide variety of spells. Um, but, uh, as I said, the 3 5 for 4 is uh, in turn really, really good, and um, in gaining uh, that much attack with 5 health, which, which is kind of hard to get rid of, um, it can be very strong. I can see that card being very good in Arena well. And Clockwork Giant, 12 mana, 8 8, like every giant, costs 1 mana, uh, yeah, one mana less for each card in your opponent's hand. Okay, what does that counter? Hand lock. Um, so. Yeah, um, many players have been struggling against Handlock, of course, a very uh, potent, very strong deck. I've been playing Handlock myself a lot. And, um, yeah, this card lets, makes me regret that there's n there are no sideboards in Hearthstone. Because if you could bring in this card specifically against Handlock, you could absolutely melt face with that, I, I think. Um, but other than that, I can't see that being very good. Uh, if your opponent has like three cards in hand, that's an 8-8 that's an eight, eight for 9. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, again, against Handlock or maybe against um, slower control decks that draw a lot of cards like Freeze Mage or uh, Control Priest might be might be okay. And Clockwork Gnome. One mana, two, one, so the stat line's pretty nice. Uh, Death Rattle, add a spare part to you, or spare part card to your hand. That seems very, very cost efficient, doesn't it? Two, one for one is, of course, great, and with the spare part card, which gives you some more utility, um, that sounds pretty nice. And then you know, Cogmaster, one mana, one, two, so the stat line's again pretty nice. Has plus two attack while you have a mech. That sounds great, doesn't it? A 3-2 for 2. A uh, 3-2 for 1 on turn 1. No, you play it as a 1-2 for, for 1. One thing after the other. And then on turn 2 you can play a mech, supposedly, if you have one, and it becomes a 3-2 for, for 1, which you, can, which you can then hit with. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Then Dr. Boom, another legendary. Uh, 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, so standard set line. Uh, battle cry, summon two 1-1 one, one boom bots. Warning bots may explode. Okay, what's a boom bot? What does that look like? Okay, let's say 1-1 one, one for 1. Death rattle deal 1 to 3 damage to a random enemy. Okay, so that sounds that sounds pretty nice. That's some added damage against, uh, against your opponent. So yeah, uh, stat line looks good. 7-7 seven, seven for 7 is nice, um, and the added, added damage to your opponent uh, might might be kind of useful. Then, Enhance Omecano, 4-mana uh, 3-2, so not great. Battlecry, give your other minions Wind Fury, Taunt, or Divine Shield at random. Oh god, I can see that guy being very good in, um, in the aggro decks. If you give all your minions Wind Fury, or Taunt, or Divine Shield, that's 
all modes are very relevant, no matter what you get, if you have like three minions out and all of them have Divine Shield all of a sudden, or Taunt, or Wind Fury and can hit twice to the face, that's that's pretty harsh. So I can see that guy being very strong in like Zoo-ish decks in the, in the mid, to, mid to late game. Or in the um, kind of Death Rattle or Shaman uh, decks that use Wind Fury and Blood Blast and, and, and Rock by a Weapon and all of, all of that. Then Explosive Sheep, 2 mana 1-1, one, one, Death Rattle deals do 2 damage to all minions. That card is insane. I've thought about this card a bit because I've uh, played it in my arena run. And I can see that card being very good in Mage specifically. Because uh, Mage control at the moment not very prevalent. Because um, Mage does not have very good ways of board control early on. Especially AoE. Uh, you have like Frostbolt and um, Arcane Explosion and that's about it. And Arcane Explosion of course isn't very good. But if you can uh, play an Explosive Sheep and the next turn blow it up with your Flame Blast or do that in one turn if you're on turn 4 or you play 2 on turn 6 and then blow them up with a Flame Blast which blows up everything because it deals 4 damage to everything. Yeah, that, uh, I can see that being very good. That's um, a very efficient way of clearing the board right there. Um, of course, you can hit uh, a, an enemy 3 health minion with it on your next turn and uh, maybe blow it up that way. So yeah, that thing will always trade up and, uh, or mostly trade up. And I think it, can, it will be very potent, especially in Mage. That's why. Then Fell Reaver, 5 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. Holy shit. Uh, whenever your opponent plays a card, discard the top three cards of your deck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I want to play against this card with Miracle Rogue. <laughs> I will completely mill my opponent at once with it. Oh god. Yeah, that sounds very good. Um, of course, five mana eight eight is um, is very good, but uh, the drawback is is not not so great so if your opponent plays 10 cards you've milled your entire deck not too great is it okay force tank max eight mana seven seven i've played uh, divine shield i've played that guy as i finish in my arena run was kind of okay i ran to some big game hunters which was unfortunate but um of course seven seven at divine shield for eight is a reasonable cost and that's a big guy we will just uh hit hit face very often and uh, it can trade up with the divine shield you will deal seven damage um, without uh, being harmed so yeah I can I can get behind that card then we have the flying machine three mana one four wind fury <sighs> blizzard why do you make wind fury cards that crappy I know wind fury is a very powerful mechanic but that that thing, if you just play it that way, deals two damage per turn. I know it has four health, which is nice, uh, so it sticks around a bit. And if you put a rock biter or a bloodlust or a defender of Argus to it or a direwolf alpha, it can be uh, can deal quite uh, the amount of damage. But on its own, of course, the card is crap. It's a one four for three. That's way too overcosted. Well, it's. Uh, yeah, you should say it's a 2-4 because it has Wind Fury, but yeah, one attack Wind Fury is just not very good. Let's let's just face it. And Foe Repo, 4,008-6-9. Okay, nice stat line right there. Also damages the minion next to whomever he attacks. Okay, well that's something. Um, I'm thinking Ram Druid right now. Ram Druid or um, Warrior Control. Because that thing gives you board control, doesn't it? It hits like three minions at once, tops. And uh, does it get the damage from? It doesn't look like it, does it? It also damages the minion next to whomever he attacks. No, I think, don't think it gets the damage from from those minions. So yeah, that is nine health. That is a lot. So it will deal like six damage to three minions, up to three minions. That's very nice per turn. Yes, so I can see that uh, that guy being very potent in control decks. And Gazlo, another uh, 
a legendary 6 mana 3 6 stat line not too great. Whenever you cast a 1 mana spell, add a random mech to your hand. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, is, aren't there many relevant 1 mana spells? Well, there's the spare cards, right? So if you do, if you kind of put that in your deck and you make a um, like a synergistic deck with um, with like mechs and, and all those spare card cards, then that could be good. And Gilblin a Stalker, two mana, two three stealth. No stat line, the stealth on top of that seems good. Uh, I can see that guy being good in arena. Other than that, not so much. Um, it's a better zombie chow. Uh, but Zombie Chow is one mana, which is why people play it in control decks. So, um, yeah, as I said, I can see that guy being good in Arena, where two drops are very viable, especially when they have um, three health or three attack. And uh, the stealth makes it a better uh, River Croc, so, yeah. And Gnome Regan Infantry, one four for three mana, charge and taunt. Charge and taunt is a. Odd co is an odd combination, isn't it? Um, what do you want with a taunt that has charge, especially when it only has one attack? That seems like a very, very oddly designed card. Like, you can hit for one immediately, and you have a 1 4 on defense then. A taunt for three mana. That. I, I can't get beyond that concept of that card, I don't think. And Goblin Slapper, 3 mana, 2, 4, has plus 4 attack while your opponent has 6 or more cards in hand. 2, 4 for 3, again, is uh, in itself pretty nice, very standard uh, stat line, but 4 health is always better than 3. And uh, the plus 4 attack is nice when your opponent has 6 or more cards in hand, so it's kind of good against uh, slower control decks, especially Handlock, who wants to uh, fill his hand uh, full of tasty cards. Yeah, um, again another another card against Handlock, uh, which seems to be <laughs> seems to me that that Blizzard wants to nerf Handlock a little bit with with that. So yeah, I can see that card being good, especially in Arena where you want um, cards to be good on their own, and this card definitely is with a two four four three is a solid stat line, and with the added bonus that can be kind of helpful. Gnomish Experimenter, three mana three two. I'll cry, draw a card if it's a minion, transform it into a chicken. Okay, uh, so not good in decks with a lot of minions. AKA Miracle Rogue, probably. Uh, but I don't know, do you want a 3 2 for 3 that just draws you a card and might, um, <laughs> might obliterate your win condition? Yeah, I don't think. And Hemet, nothing worry. A 5 mana 6 3 battle cry, destroy a beast. I love that battle cry. That's very good against Hunter, isn't it? Um, although Hunter has kind of gone away from beasts over the last few months, um, but uh, destroying a beast which can be targeted, I, I suppose, uh, is of course very nice. What uh, strikes me is the, the stat line. The 6, 3 for 5 is not particularly great. 3 health is not too good. Anything that can be uh, cleared by the um, by 2 mana 3 twos, of which there are a decent amount, um, doesn't isn't really worth the five mana, is it? Um, but yeah, uh, can be could be good. Uh, I can see that guy being like a good silver bullet against uh, Hunter. But other than that, maybe not. And Hop Goblin, three mana, two, three. Whenever you play a one attack minion, give it plus two, plus two. Mm hmm, that's pretty nice for aggro, isn't it? Yeah, play a Hop Goblin on turn three or four, and add that up with. Um, Add another one cost minion to it, or one attack minion rather, and give it plus two plus two. Yeah, that's pretty cost efficient, isn't it? I can see that guy being very, very potent in aggro. Illuminator. Three mana, two, four. Stat line looks pretty good. If you control a secret at the end of your turn, restore four health to your hero. Mm, there's something for mage, isn't it? So if you put two of those in your deck and you play things like Ice Block and Ice Barrier and Duplicate maybe. That guy can buy you some time for a couple of turns. Uh, suppose your opponent doesn't kill it, which isn't very uh, which isn't very very easy with four health. So yeah, I can see that guy being good in 
in Freeze Mage and Mage Control in general. Uh, other than that, maybe not so much, but uh, it's good that Mage gets a few cards that might help it out. And then we have Jeez, a rather, rather charming looking fella. Uh, four mana, one four, so terrible stat line. And at the end of each player's turn, their player draws until they have three cards. Okay. So, let's go over that one by one. At the end of each player's turn, that player draws until they have three cards. What is that good in aggro? Because aggro likes to dump its cards. And if you can then refuel your hand by three, supposedly. Um, that's, of course, very good. Uh, I don't know if an aggro deck wants to put this minion into its deck, though. Because 4 mana for an aggro deck is uh, a lot, and 1-4, as I said, is a terrible stat line. So I don't think that guy will be worth including in aggro decks. And of course control decks will have other uh, more efficient ways of fueling their hand, with like Acolyte of Pain and Gadgetan and uh, Northry Cleric. And we have the junk bot, 5 mana 1 5, another terrible stat line. And whenever a friendly mech dies, gain plus 2 plus 2. Okay, so that guy is like the um, scavenging hyena of mechs. Um, that sounds pretty nice. If you can build a deck around mechs, uh, which I will keep an eye out on, I don't think I will play one, but uh, I will keep an eye out uh, whether or not that is uh, competitively viable. It sounds pretty good so far. And Kazan Mystic, Battlecry, 10 control of, an, of a random enemy secret, 4 mana, 4-3. Uh, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Especially in Arena, I can see that guy being good. If you play against a mage or um, a hunter and you take control of their secret that they might have played, that sounds pretty nice. And the stat line on its own, not too shabby. Uh, of course, a 4 mana, 4-3 uh, gets killed by a 2 mana, 3-2. That might be on the field. But you're not going to play that guy into that, are you? Um, yeah, the, I don't know if the battle cry makes up for the for the lack of health, but uh, the effect is kind of nice. I, I like uh, seeing cards that interact with secrets because I uh, dislike the uh, secret mechanic up to this point so far. Little Exorcist, three mana, two three. Taunt, battle cry, gain plus two, uh, plus one, plus one for each enemy death rattle minion. And fuck you, death rattle hunter. Oh my god, that card's good. That looks amazing. Yeah, with the amount of Death Rattle decks out there, Death Rattle Hunter, Shaman, Priest, that guy uh, could be amazing. Yeah, and of course, 2 mana, 2, 3, Taunt for 3 mana. Uh, 3 mana, 2, 3, Taunt in itself isn't, isn't bad. It's kind of subpar, but it's not, not terrible. And if you gain... Yeah, that, that's the perfect card against Death Rattle decks. I can't, can't really say it differently. So Blizzard has uh, acknowledged that they have to do something there and, and they have printed a card for it, which is a very nice way of nerfing those strategies. And Lost Tall Strider, 4 mana, 5 4. A uh, nice stat line for a vanilla creature. It is a beast. I should uh, point that out so it synergizes with beasts uh, quite a bit. Uh, I would prefer if it had one more health instead of one more. Uh, attack, which would be a Chiwun Yeti that is also a beast, but I can see why they didn't do that. And um, yeah, the, the stat line looks kind of nice, and I can see that guy of course being good in Arena, and other than that, maybe not so much. And here we have a card that I loved in my Arena run, and that I will play until the end of freaking time, and then I will pick every time I get it in Arena, which is the Madder Bomber, which is Mad Bomber, but Madder. Uh, 5 mana, 5, 4, battle cry, deal 6 damage, randomly split between all other characters. So it throws twice the amount of bombs that uh, Mad Bomber throws, and it's a bit bigger. And yeah, I love this card. It blows up so much on, the, uh, on your opponent's side. Uh, well, well as, as, as on your side as well, but... Uh, uh, in Constructed, I can see that guy being not so good, uh, just because... Um, Class like Paladin and, um, and Shaman are a bit counteracted by it. But yeah, in Arena, I, I will pick that guy uh, over and over again. Uh, mechanical Yeti, uh, 4 mana, 4 5, Death Rattle, give each player a spare part. 
which is a Shuwen Yeti uh, stats wise, which is a very nice minion as you all know. Uh, Death Threatle gives each uh, player a uh, spare part, which is a symmetrical effect, so keep that in mind. Um, but I think that is a uh, an improvement to the card, uh, because the spare parts are not very that powerful, they're, they're kind of nice, but they're not that powerful. And um, uh, you get one as well, so uh, it doesn't really matter, they do kind of cancel each other out. And it's a mech, so it synergizes with mechs, so there's no point in playing a Chilwin Yeti in your mech deck if you can play a Mechanical Yeti. And Mech Warper, 2 mana, 2, 3, or your mechs cost 1 less. Very nice in a mech deck, of course, stat line looks amazing, 2 mana, 2, 3. And with the cost reduction on mechs, um, I can see that guy being totally mandatory in uh, the uh, in the obviously upcoming mech decks. Those those decks will be around, I, I can tell you <laughs> that for a fact. And then we have Mechnir Thermoplug, another legendary 9 mana 9 7. Whenever an enemy minion dies, summon a Leper Gnome. Okay. 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 Is that guy any good? 9 mana is a lot. 9 7 is, a, is not a brilliant stat line. Um, who would benefit from that? Someone who already has board control and wants damage? Well, I can see that guy being kind of like a, a bullshit card for some, some gimmicky decks, but I don't think it will be viable and constructed. The effect is nice, don't get me wrong. But, um,. Yeah, you play it and you then you trade your minions into your opponent's minions and you get leper gnomes from it, which will eventually damage your opponent one way or the other. Um, yeah, that that sounds sounds intriguing right off the bat, but um, it's, it sounds a bit too too gimmicky. What I can get behind is the idea of playing that guy with Kalthazard. If you get those two out, that's probably a combo that your opponent will not get rid of anymore and we'll, we'll die from it. But of course that's a very costly um, costly combo. So yeah, we will see. But uh, it, it's interesting uh, nonetheless. Uh, I don't think it will be that viable in competitive constructed matches, but you're gonna have some fun every now and then. And this card will probably provide that. And Micro Machine, 2 mana 1, 2. At the start of each turn, gain plus 1 attack. Okay. Uh, I can see that guy being potent in aggro and uh, in the mech decks that will no doubt pop up. Um, but it's two health with probably a lot of attack over the course of some turns. Uh, so it dies to everything like backstab and uh, all the cheap removal spells there are. So yeah, not too great, but uh, what will he do for a two mana minion? It's, it sounds okay, let's, let's put it that way. And mini mage. 4 mana, 4, 1. Terrible. Uh, stealth. Spell damage plus 1. Okay, so it's a spell damage uh, minion that's kinda hard to get rid of without AoE. Against an AoE spell it dies immediately, but uh, without that it's pretty hard to get rid of because it can't be targeted by spot removal, it can't be attacked. Um, yeah, it sounds... sounds... kinda okay. A plus spell damage minion for 4 mana isn't really worth it, I, I think. Um, you want to play something like Azure Drake, which is a good buddy with 4-4, four, four, and draws you a card. Uh, that That's a solid minion, or Blood Mage Thanos for 2 mana, who draws you a card and has spell damage. And I, I don't know if you have a 4 mana spell damage plus minion, and with that stat line is viable. But it's an interesting card nonetheless. And then Mimiron's Head. 5 mana, 4, 5. At the start of your turn, if you have at least 3 mechs, destroy them all and form VO7tron. Or Voltron. Or however you want to uh, pronounce that. Okay, so we should take a look at Voltron. Uh, 8 mana, 4, 8. Charge and Mega Wind Fury can attack 4 times a turn. So, yeah. Uh, there will be um, mech decks popping up. I set that countless times before. And this guy will probably be your main win condition in those those decks, other than uh, just uh, minions that just synergize with each other pretty well. 
So you will play lots of mechs and then play Mimurin's head and then your opponent will cringe and will be hard pressed to destroy that within his next turn, otherwise he will be faced with a 16 damage minion that can attack immediately. Nice charge. Has a lot of health. And two more words. Kalthasad. <laughs> yeah. Um, that deck idea will pop up, I can tell you that. I will play against that on a uh, low level ladder um, countless times. Everyone who will get that menu will most definitely make a mech deck. And why wouldn't you? <laughs> it sounds very, very strong, doesn't it? But, um, I, as I said, I don't know if the, the mech idea is viable in, in and of itself, or if it's just a concept that you can include in other decks, like like uh, other aggro decks. But the combo is nice, of course. And if you play Kel'Thuzad on top of that, well, then <laughs> that should win you the game, because you get a uh, 16 damage Mega Wind Fury charge thing. Uh, and you get your mechs back at the end of the turn. Which makes you another mech, uh, which makes you another Voltron at the, at the beginning of the next turn, so... <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah. I'm pretty faced by that. If, even if it's, even if you don't get the three mechs together, the 5 mana 4-5 isn't too bad. So, um... That guy sounds pretty cost efficient. And, um, yeah, if you can assemble that combo, then, um... And things are looking bad for your opponent. Uh, but as with the Thaddeus combo, um, that thing died down really quickly, didn't it? So um, I'm kind of kind of in doubt about this uh, combo, but uh, we will see. It's a very potent card, uh, uh, no doubt. So we will we will wait what happens. And Moga the Ogre, six mana seven six, another legendary. All minions have a 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. That guy goes straight into the bullshit legendary deck, right with Nosdomu and uh, Elite Torrent Chieftain. <laughs> because that guy, oh god, the amount of chaos that that guy will cause. Ah, uh, I can, I can only imagine. Oh my god, I will rage because of this guy because it's a symmetrical effect, and if my opponent plays that against me, then I cannot even trade up. Uh, I cannot trade efficiently because I have no control over <laughs> what my minions actually attack. Yeah, I can see that guy being very good against control, who wants to trade with his minions, uh, effectively. And if you have some other guy that um, that uh, has like a lot of attack, and you you uh, um, you accidentally attack into that, then yeah. As I said, that guy will make you rage because. Yeah, it makes make combat like extremely unpredictable. But I like the idea. It's it's very nice to have uh, fun every now and then. Uh, of course, it's like another new RNG bullshit, which is a deliberate Hearthstone design decision, I might add. Um, which I don't really like. I don't like the amount of of uh, randomness that Hearthstone has. But as I said, it's a uh, design decision that Blizzard uh, has made for the game, and I'm kind of okay with it. Then Ogre Brute, 3 mana 4-4, four, four. nice stat line, 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Okay, I can get behind that card, you get a good stat line, good minion, uh, with a drawback, but nevertheless that guy will um, be able to trade up most of the time, I think. And Piloted Shredder, 4 mana 4-3, four, and Death Rattle summon a random 2 cost minion. Pretty nice card, I played against it in Arena, uh, summoned some nasty things. Piloted Sky Golem, like uh, pretty much along the same lines. Six mana, six four. Death Rattle summon a random four cost minion. Of course, four cost minions better than two cost minions. Stat line doesn't look too amazing, but it summons a four cost minion, so it's more like a can blood hoop, kind of. Uh, of course, it's random again, uh, but the amount of good uh, four cost minions that are out there is pretty high, I think. So, what could you summon like a Chilwin Yeti or? Uh, what else is there? So yeah, I just looked it up. So you could have things like Ancient Brewmaster, or Orknai Soul Priest, or Chilwin Yeti, as I said, or Dark Iron Dwarf, which is in and of itself a good minion, or a Dread Corsair, or a Gnomish Inventor, or a Houndmaster, or a Corcron Elite, or a Lightspawn, or a Lost Tall Strider, and all that good jazz. 
that sounds pretty nice. So a lot of good uh, four course minions out there, and if you get one of them uh, on top of that, that will make up for the lack of health that that guy has. So yeah, I can see that guy being very, very potent. And Puddle Stomper, we get another Murloc. Two mana, three, two Murloc. Okay, so it's a Bloodfin Raptor that is not a beast, but a Murloc. So nothing, not much to say about that. But uh, yeah, if you're if you're playing Murlocs, I don't know why you should, but um, uh, if you're doing that, that then you have a uh, new quality to drop that synergy on this one. Recombobulator. Two mana, three, two. Battlecry, transform a friendly minion into a random minion with the same cost. Ah, another random bullshit. I love it. Uh, of course, good uh, quality. Two drop, three, two. Uh, that's another block from Raptor. And um, you might get lucky with the transformation. Uh, you will probably uh, transform a minion that isn't very good to begin with. And... Uh, have a chance to get a better minion out of that, so that's pretty nice. I, I uh, will probably play around with that. Uh, of course, that guy could be very good in Arena, uh, where two mana three twos are pretty common and uh, are good in and of itself. And with the with the added effect, that could be kind of useful. Then we have Salty Dog, five mana seven four, uh, vanilla pirate. Okay, not much to say about that very little health for 5 mana, and for the amount of attack that thing has, it's like a poor man's core hand maybe. And ship's cannon, 2 mana, 2, 3, whenever you summon a pirate, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. Okay, do we want to make pirates viable? Seems like it. Uh, that card in and of itself isn't too shabby, because 2 mana, 2, 3. And with the added bonus, if you get some more pirates, I can see that guy being um, kind of good in arena where you sometimes draft some pirates like uh, maybe one of the aforementioned Salty Dogs or the, uh, I forgot the, the name, is it Blood Sail Raider? The, the uh, thing that gains attack with the um, with your weapon. Or the, the Dread Corsair, or stuff like that. Sneed's Old Shredder, a mech 8 mana 5 for 7 death rail. Summon a random legendary minion, are you kidding me? Uh, that goes straight into the bullshit deck. Okay, so yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, uh, I will rage because of that minion too. Oh my god, it could be my ex, and it could be Deathwing. <laughs> you won't know before you kill it. <laughs> okay, uh, of course, big si uh, silence bait and hex bait and polymorph bait and whatnot. Um, yeah, I don't know if that guy will be too potent in and of itself because 8 mana 5 7 isn't too great but um, the death rattle is of course something which has never been there before and uh, could be very very interesting and spider tank 3 mana 3 4 a 3 mana 3 4 is always very nice in arena uh, uh, to quote Trump uh, in a world where everyone plays 2 mana 3 2s the 3 mana 3 4 is the king so, uh, before we had the Dark Cultist in that, um, in that slot, and now we have the Spider Tank, which is also a mech, so it might um, synergize with the mechs uh, pretty well. So yeah, a uh, pretty quality minion, of course, great stat line. Uh, other than that, not much to say about that. And Stone Splinter Trog, 2 mana, 2, 3, whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain plus 1 attack. A better River Croc, pretty much, if you don't uh, draft for or if you don't build around Beast Synergy and you have River Croc in there for whatever reason. Yeah, 2 mana, 2, 3, good, good stat line with the added bonus uh, against spells. Very nice, especially if you're if you're on the play and your opponent has the coin. Target dummy, 0 mana, 0, 2, taunt. Why in the hell would you play that? That's a gorgeous footman that has no attack value. Well, it could be nice in Zoo. Zoo plays things like Shield Bearer, uh, which is a 1 mana, 0, 4 taunt which is a lot better than this, I think. But uh, I don't see why you would. Not really. I can't, I can't uh, imagine why you would play that. And Tinker Town Technician. 3 mana, 3, 3. Very nice stat line. Uh, Battlecry, if you have a mech game, plus 1, plus 1, and add a spare part to your hand. Okay, so there's a there's the mech synergy. Very nice. Uh, Toshli, another uh, legendary. 6 mana, 5, 7. That line looks okay. Battle Cry and Death Rattle. Add a spare part card to your hand. So you get two, which is nice. And Troxor the Earthinator. 
7 minus 6, 6. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, summon a burly rock jaw truck. That's the big one from, from the beginning. Okay, that's very, very nice. Okay, I want to go over the uh, spare part cards really quick. Uh, we have armor plating gives a minion uh, plus one health, or emergency coolant freezes a minion. Finicky cloak field gives a friendly minion stealth until your next turn. Uh, reversing switch swap a minion's attack and health. Rusty horn gives a minion taunt, and nice so sound that thing makes, by the way. Uh, time rewinder return a friendly minion to her hand, and whirling blades give a minion plus one attack. I like each and every one of those cards. Uh, it has a very nice, um, very nice utility uh, effect, and is can be targeted each and every one of them. And it's for one mana. It's a kind of minor effect, like plus one health or give it taunt or whatever. It's kind of useful. It gives you utility, and um, it's not too too big of an effect. And yeah, that's that's why I think these cards will make uh, gameplay itself better because it gives it more depth, more control over what you do, and more utility, which is very very nice. So yeah, that's for the neutral cards. Uh, my impression so far: very interesting cards in there. Um, good in ag uh, potent for aggro as well as control. Uh, lots of legendaries in there that I uh, really like the effect of. I like the Faux Reaper, which damages the minions next to the one he attacks. I like the uh, thing that summons a random legendary. Which, I like the thing that gives all your minions a 50% 50 chance, 50 chance to uh, miss or to attack the wrong thing. I like Mimiran's head, of course. The, the combo looks very enticing. Um, yeah, that's, that's all very well and good. Uh, I think Blizzard did a very good job in, on the neutral cards, and uh, I can see these, these things improving gameplay a lot and enhancing that. So yeah, that's all for the neutral cards for now. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and see you guys in the next video where we talk about individual class cards. So see you then. Goodbye.